Picture this. It's a crisp evening in the early 70 seconds. The aroma of dinner wafts through the air, and you find yourself nestled on your favorite spot on the couch. The television screen flickers to life, and there it is, that iconic opening theme, accompanied by the mischievous grin of a certain Archie Bunker. This, my friends, is your first encounter with the 1971 TV series, All in the Family. As Archie's gruff voice resonates through your living room, you can't help but be drawn into the world of the bunkers, a world brimming with humor, candor, and a touch of controversy. The show's fearless exploration of societal issues, coupled with unforgettable characters like Edith, Gloria, and Meathead, has etched itself into the annals of television history. Perhaps you remember laughing uproariously at Archie's comically misguided opinions or shedding a tear during one of the show's heartfelt moments. Whether you were a steadfast fan from the very beginning or stumbled upon reruns years later, All in the Family had a way of resonating with audiences like few others. Now, let's dive a little deeper into the magic of this beloved show with some random facts that will take you on a trip down memory lane. So, fasten your seatbelts as we journey through the trivia and anecdotes that make All in the Family a true classic. Strap in, because here come the facts. All in the Family, a groundbreaking TV series that premiered in 1971, revolutionized American television with its bold and often controversial themes. Created by Norman Lear, the show originated from a British sitcom, but it uniquely transplanted the concept to the American landscape. The series centered around the Bunker family, led by the iconic character Archie Bunker, brilliantly portrayed by Carol O'Connor. Archie, a lovable but bigoted working-class patriarch, clashed with his liberal daughter Gloria and her husband Mike, who represented the younger generation's progressive ideals. The show's unique style was marked by its willingness to address taboo subjects like racism, sexism, and social issues head-on, sparking important conversations in living rooms across the nation. All in the Family challenged societal norms, offered biting satire, and featured sharp wit thanks to Lear's impeccable writing and the stellar cast. This iconic series left an indelible mark on popular culture, not only as a ratings hit but also as a cultural touchstone, shaping the way television tackled societal issues. It birthed spin-offs, including The Jeffersons and Maude, and introduced viewers to a new form of sitcom that blended humor with thought-provoking commentary. All in the Family remains a timeless classic that continues to resonate with audiences, making it a pivotal moment in television history. In 1971, the TV series All in the Family made waves for its portrayal of American family life. One interesting aspect of the show was Sally Struthers' role as Gloria. At times, Struthers felt frustrated with her character's limited scope, primarily defending her husband Mike and her mother Edith against the controversial Archie. She also tackled women's issues and helped Edith with household chores. Struthers later realized that her character's perspective was shaped by middle-aged men, which explained the limitations she faced in her role. Another noteworthy incident involved Vincent Gardenia, who was initially supposed to be a regular on the series. However, he quit after a few episodes due to finding his character, Frank Lorenzo, boring. Cardinia also expressed dissatisfaction with the fact that he and Betty Garrett had little to do during rehearsals compared to the four main stars. In 1974, Sally Struthers attempted to break free from her contract, but was unsuccessful. Ironically, she later struggled to find work after her time on All in the Family. These behind-the-scenes insights shed light on the challenges and dynamics within the cast during the show's iconic run. In real life, Carol O'Connor was very much the opposite of Archie Bunker. Politically and socially liberal, intelligent, highly educated, well-spoken, and generous with his time and money. O'Connor said he accepted the role of Archie largely to challenge himself to tap into and explore the mindset of such a person. Unlike his on-screen character, O'Connor was a complex and progressive individual far removed from the narrow-mindedness of Archie Bunker. Carol O'Connor's portrayal of Archie Bunker on the 1971 TV series All in the Family remains iconic. However, it's important to recognize that the actor behind the character was nothing like the bigoted and conservative figure he brought to life on screen. The stark contrast between O'Connor's real-life persona and his on-screen role showcases his exceptional acting ability and dedication to his craft. 
While Archie Bunker may have been known for his stubbornness and old-fashioned beliefs, Carol O'Connor was a champion of social progress and a man of great intellect. He used his role as Archie to challenge himself as an actor and explore the complexities of a character whose views were diametrically opposed to his own. This divergence between actor and character is a testament to O'Connor's talent and highlights the power of television to convey important social messages. All in the family tackled issues of race, gender, and societal change head-on, and O'Connor's portrayal of Archie Bunker played a significant role in bringing these topics to the forefront of American television. In conclusion, Carol O'Connor's portrayal of Archie Bunker on All in the Family is a shining example of an actor's ability to step into the shoes of a character with vastly different beliefs. O'Connor's personal commitment to social progress and his willingness to take on the role of Archie for the sake of challenging himself make him a standout figure in the history of television. In one episode of the 1971 TV series All in the Family, Jean Stapleton, who played Edith Bunker, took on a unique role. She not only portrayed Edith, but also played the part of the dour and grumpy girlfriend of a local butcher who was infatuated with Edith. In an intriguing twist, the show introduced a girlfriend for the butcher who looked exactly like Edith, but had a completely different personality. This use of doppelgangers where the leads play dual roles is a common sitcom gimmick seen in various shows like Happy Days, The Brady Bunch, Different Strokes, The Patty Duke Show, Cheers, and Here's Lucy. However, in All in the Family, this inventive twist was executed uniquely with Gene Stapleton taking on both roles. This creative approach added a layer of humor and complexity to the show, allowing Stapleton to showcase her acting skills by portraying two contrasting characters. It was a memorable episode that highlighted the versatility of the cast and the innovative storytelling that made All in the Family a beloved classic. And here's an interesting tidbit, Rob Reiner, who later became famous for his role as Michael Stivick on the show, initially auditioned for the original pilot but was turned down. It wasn't until the third pilot was in production that Norman Lear, the creator of the series, saw Reiner in another TV show called Headmaster. Valerie has an emotional gestalt for the teacher and decided to give him another chance. This second opportunity led to Rob Reiner's iconic role in All in the Family and marked a pivotal moment in his career. Lastly, a piece of TV history, Archie and Edith Bunker's easy chairs from the series are now on display at the Smithsonian, serving as a testament to the lasting impact and cultural significance of All in the Family. In this way, All in the Family remains not only a classic television series, but also a source of fascinating behind-the-scenes stories and cultural artifacts that continue to be celebrated today. In 1971, the TV series All in the Family faced a rocky start. After its premiere, the initial excitement died down quickly, and the show's ratings were so low that it was on the verge of cancellation. However, things took an unexpected turn during the 1971 summer rerun season. To the surprise of many involved with the show, it began to build a substantial audience. Just a few weeks before the 1971-72 season was set to begin, CBS made the surprising announcement that the series would be renewed. All in the Family also holds a record in the world of television spin-offs. It has spawned more spin-off shows than almost any other program. First, there was Maud, followed by Good Times. Then came The Jeffersons, which led to Checking In. It also spun off Archie Bunker's Place, 704 Hosser, and Gloria. That's a total of seven programs spun off from one TV show, a remarkable achievement in television history. The only other show that comes close in terms of record spin-offs would be Happy Days. Interestingly, despite being known for its often controversial and politically charged content, it's worth noting that the cast and crew of All in the Family had their own political leanings. While Rob Reiner, who played the character Michael Stivick, is a liberal Democrat, he has admitted that Carol O'Connor, who portrayed Archie Bunker, was actually more liberal than he was. Norman Lear, the show's creator, is also a liberal Democrat, as were most of the writers and crew members. This fact challenges the claim that the show was right-wing propaganda, highlighting the complexities behind the scenes. In conclusion, All in the Family overcame a shaky start to become a cultural phenomenon, with a record number of spin-off shows. It also featured a cast and crew with diverse political beliefs, dispelling the notion that the show was a one-sided political platform.
as we bid adieu to the timeless classic that is the 1971 TV series, All in the Family, we invite you to take a moment to reflect on the profound impact this show has had on our lives. This iconic sitcom, created by the legendary Norman Lear, transcended mere entertainment to become a mirror reflecting the complexities of society, all while making us laugh and think. Perhaps you recall the irreverent yet lovable Archie Bunker, the quintessential American everyman, whose well-intentioned but often misguided views were both comical and thought-provoking. Or maybe it was the character of Edith, with her unwavering kindness, who touched your heart and made you smile. And who could forget the groundbreaking moments when all in the family fearlessly tackled taboo topics, challenging the status quo and sparking important conversations. Now, we invite you to share your cherished memories and thoughts about this groundbreaking series. How did all in the family resonate with you? Did it influence your perspective on societal issues? Did you find yourself laughing and learning simultaneously? Your unique experiences and insights are a testament to the enduring relevance of this show. In celebrating the legacy of all in the family, we're reminded of the power of television to shape our understanding of the world and the people in it. Thank you for joining us on this journey down memory lane and for sharing your connection to this remarkable series. Your stories and reflections enrich the tapestry of our collective nostalgia, reminding us that great television, like all in the family, can leave an indelible mark on our hearts and minds. So, let's keep the conversation alive. Share your thoughts, favorite moments, or personal anecdotes about the show, and let's continue to honor this iconic piece of television history together. Thank you for your time and interest in reliving the magic of all in the family. We look forward to hearing from you and celebrating the enduring legacy of this beloved series. Remember, your story is part of the narrative too. Warmly.